Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Fusion Antibodies PLC Interim Results Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged. They can be submitted anytime via the Q&A tab that's just situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Please just simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all of the questions submitted today and publish responses where it is appropriate to do so. Before we begin, I would like to submit the following poll, and if you could give that your kind attention, I'm sure the company would be most grateful. And I'd now like to hand you over to CEO Adrian Kincaid. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank you very much. Um, hopefully everyone can see us. Apologies if that wasn't possible last time. We had a few bandwidth issues, which caused a, a sacrifice of the camera, but we'll leave the cameras on this time and uh, take you through the presentation. So I'm joined today by uh, with James, CFO. Good morning. And uh, yes, please do pop questions into the Q&A and we'll do our best to get through those towards the end. Um, the more observant of you may have noticed on the, uh, the, the holding deck that we have, we've made a slight change uh, in the circle on the left hand side. And this reflects our uh, change in strategy, which we'll take you through in much more detail throughout the presentation. But essentially, it's uh, bringing together the various parts of what we already offer and combining them as essentially an end to end service to um, generate uh, therapeutic antibodies uh, for our clients. So that integrated offering has benefits for ourselves, but also for our clients. Um, and it lays a, a good solid foundation for further development of the business. So uh, we'll go into more detail on that in, in a little while. So we also have to uh, take you through the disclaimer, um, but we will uh, take this as, as red. Um, it's uh, just the standard uh, sort of caveats that we have to have for being a PLC. So uh, opening the agenda in terms of introduction and highlights um, about us and what we do. Um, as I said, that there's uh, the various components that have been on offer uh, for the business to date uh, cover discovery. Uh, so finding antibodies against a particular target for which you may need us to generate uh, some of that target material in the first instance. Uh, we then go through a series of engineering and if the um, antibody is, is not a human derived structure, um, then we need to make it humanized. As many of you will already have heard about the uh, Alzheimer's antibody that was in the press a few weeks ago. That in, uh, is an example of a humanized antibody. Uh, some people describe it as um, taking the, the fur, the ears and the tail off, off the animal uh, original organism. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but humanization is obviously critical uh, for any um, therapeutic that's going to be injected into a patient. Um, getting it right is also uh, every bit as critical. Uh, we also do affinity maturation and sequence optimization uh, to eliminate various risks. Uh, some of those risks include aggregation or post-translational modifications, which can make uh, manufacturing more problematic downstream. And indeed, in the final part of the supply of uh, our end-to-end -end offering, uh, we can take people up to cell line development, stable cell lines, which we can then take into manufacturing. We don't do the GMP manufacture ourselves, uh, but we are working with um, um, collaborators, uh, partners, who have that as our business and we can act as a front end to them um, and manage that process again through for the for the client. Bringing us all together then is uh, uh, an evolution of what we've offered. So the integrated therapeutic antibody service is um, a development of what we've already got. Very little risk. There is very little change in terms of the individual parts, but bringing it together as an end to end uh, process uh, gives significant advantages, not least in terms of timing. It's still uh, attractive to the same uh, partners that we've been working with in, in the past. So biotech, drug discovery companies, um, some diagnostic companies, although that's a very small percentage of, of what we do. Uh, it is attractive to large pharmaceutical companies, even though they have many of the capabilities in-house themselves. 
Um, but it's particularly attractive really to those companies who don't have the infrastructure, want their investment to go into um, the project itself and developing the assets rather than building up, uh, spending on capital equipment and building up teams uh, to take uh, a small number of antibodies to, through. They come to us because we have the expertise. We are still differentiated in the marketplace because of our quality, our experience, our know-how. We fixed antibodies that other people have developed or discovered hundreds and hundreds of times and uh, we've we've done an awful lot of problem solving and adding value uh, across the board we continue to do that but we are using that now to sort of uh, exemplify and justify that we are uh, a safe pair of hands and probably the best pair of hands for people to place their faith in in uh, to develop a therapeutic antibody for them so some of the advantages that that brings um, through the therapeutic, uh, the integrated platform is, is really in terms of time and de-risking. Um, when you have a process as complicated as uh, the development of a new therapeutic antibody, um, there are various phases through which the project needs to pass. And there is information that's generated in each of those phases which comes together and becomes critical in, in later stages. Getting that information right is uh, important and retaining it and passing it on to the later stages is important as well. So our ability to cover end to end means that we can capture, retain, and also think about the, um, the challenges that that's going to create. The more time we have to do that from start to end of a project gives us a better chance of uh, making sure that those issues that may be faced by the client are headed off and we have resolution for them. So we have a lower risk of problems coming out. We have a, a smoother transition from beginning to end through the various phases. And we can also start planning and ordering in materials for uh, a subsequent phase ahead of time so that there's a very smooth transition going through. Um, fusion antibodies is known amongst our clients as being a very uh, knowledgeable, very accurate in terms of our timeline and cost prediction. So when we quote, uh, we're very, very close to, to reality for our clients in that. Um, it's something that then de-risks again and helps the uh, client company get their funding and everything else allocated, their budgets done. Um, and again, de-risks and make sure that the, the whole process is as pretty much as good as it could be. Um, this approach is something that we have trialed. Some of you will have seen in the past um, an RNS that we put out about uh, a particularly large uh, project. It was sufficiently large that we had to put an RSS, an RSS, an RS, RNS, I beg your pardon, out about it. Um, because it was $1.8 million, a big project over approximately two years, um, and we are continuing to work through that. So we have had that as a case study. It's gone very well. Uh, we've had good feedback from the client, and essentially what we're doing is setting ourselves up to do more of the same, more of what we're good at, um, at higher values. So that's the direction in which this heads. Uh, essentially, though, it is an evolution of our process rather than anything particularly uh, groundbreaking and new. So if we move to some of the highlights of uh, the, the period we're reporting on, uh, we're introducing now the integrated therapeutic antibody services. It's a new approach for selling the combined services. I should also say that it's probably more efficient in doing that. Um, Within that period, of course, I was appointed, so it's very nice to be considered a, a highlight. Um, but I've been on board now for just short of four months, and I think we're making very good progress and starting to move some things through uh, where I think we can move the, the company in a slightly different direction with uh, better prospects going forward. That has been continued success uh, in the Optimal program, however, um, there are some issues still with that, uh, particularly about um, supply, uh, supplier issues and people delivering what, they, what they've what they been charged with doing. And that has held us back, that has slowed us down a little bit. But we've also had a look at that uh, overall program and believe that we can extract or create 
more value from that than just the optimal library. Uh, the optimal library is very significant. It would be a, a very um, pretty much a game changer for the business, but there are also some other parts of that program that we could extract and position for additional markets. And I'm looking really to the team to, to look at uh, achieving those elements as well, in addition to the optimal library, which uh, is, is still very much uh, a centerpiece for the internal R&D efforts. It is still in R&D, there are still risks associated with that, as with any R&D program in the, in the sector. There all ha have also been a small number of projects, although reasonably significant in terms of their value, that have been delayed by clients as they seek further investment. The marketplace for our clients in getting that investment has been tough, um, but I'm pleased to say that um, at least one of those has found uh, a new investor and has come back to us to, to move that forward again, so that's back on track. Um, however, it did impact on the H1 the figures that we're reporting today. Hopefully the others will follow suit and resolve their issues and we will get things back on track again. So I'll hand over to James to highlights on the financial side. Thanks, Adrian. Um, so uh, <clears throat> revenues of 1.9 million, down a little bit from the same period last year. Uh, and as Adrian has just mentioned, there was a, uh, or there were a small number of projects delayed by clients, uh, which led to a slight softening in, in the H1 revenues. Uh, and in addition, last year, we had our first uh, milestone of 150,000 pounds uh, as well, which was recognized in that period. So um, a little bit softer, but we understand why. And I'll talk a little bit more uh, shortly uh, about revenues in, in general. Uh, expenditure on R&D was increased by 7%. Uh, uh, Adrian has been talking there about particularly our continued uh, involvement with the Optimal program and our uh, commitment to staying at the cutting edge of uh, the industry uh, and Optimal's key part uh, of our strategy in, in doing so. Um, the loss up on last year, again, a lot of that is a function of the revenue figure uh, and the increased expenditure in R&D. Uh, other administrative and selling costs have been uh, retained um, and kept flat. So uh, really just a, a, a trading performance uh, measure there. Uh, and um, that's just for the for the first half of the period. We would have, have uh, uh, higher hopes for the second half. Um, cash position at 30 September was 1.2 million, which is still a good solid uh, Figure and again, we'll come back to uh, some other figures on the the balance sheet later on. Uh, but yes, we, we uh, uh, utilised about seven hundred fifty thousand, eight hundred thousand cash in the period. So I'll just go back to Adrian a bit as we're talking about revenues and and future uh, strategy, evolving strategy on that. Yeah, thank you, James. So there's. Uh much on this slide that I've already discussed if we've gone through the various offerings that we have, but uh, the integrated therapeutic antibody service is a natural ev evolution of our offering. It's a very sensible thing to do. It's what a lot of uh, other similarly placed businesses do when they have critical mass um, it, and can offer that end-to-end -end continuous process. That's where I believe Fusion is at at the moment and uh, we should, I hope, uh, be very successful in uh, moving the needle um, on that. So each as we do more for a project uh, or more for a client on a project, then obviously the value of that for us in terms of immediate revenues increases. Uh, they have the benefit of reduced timelines from end to end, as I've, I've mentioned, because we can phase work going from one project to the next, uh, one phase of that project to the next more smoothly. There's a reduced risk uh, through that continuity of progression, uh, provision and the retention of uh, knowledge and information around that within the team, um, which is also something which enhances the engagement. It's really uh, appreciated by our team within Fusion to, to be into the detail and working really as an extension of our clients' R&D. The client um, does remain in control, so there are still go, no-go 
decisions. That's essential. That's a requirement for this kind of business model. Um, however, we can uh, move things forward and be more specific about the um, what the measurables actually are to uh, get a good figure on a feel for, for when that uh, project is going to go forward and or if indeed it is going to go forward into the next uh, stage. That gives us better visibility on our pipeline, which is something that uh, I think all of us would, would certainly appreciate. Um, it also builds on a, a very strong case study, as I've said, the $1.8 million uh, two-year deal, which we've mentioned before. Um, that's uh, been very helpful in, in acting as a template for everybody uh, in pulling this, this together. Uh, the continuous project management managed by Fusion is important. So if there are elements where we feel that uh, it's best to outsource particular components of that, then that's something that, again, we can offer and, and manage. And we will work closely with partners uh, with particular project specific uh, tests in order to, to bring that in uh, to offer the client the best possible service. It retains the customer for more of the development work with Fusion um, so that we can get into the higher value um, areas. And it also allows us to build on that with more critical mass to be in a better negotiating position to secure milestones and royalties. So these are effectively 100% profit to the business, um, but we need to have sufficient input really into the project to, to extract those, those values in future. So those are also strengthened, and I think that's a critical thing for the business. So how would the other R&D projects that we're working on, including those that come from the, or will come from the Optimal program, going to be incorporated? Well, essentially, that's one of the other uh, reasons for doing it in this way. They slot in very well um, as options, if you like, into how we uh, go about the program. They will act as USPs in several cases, particularly the optimal library would, uh, to secure that business from start to finish uh, for us. But going from a one-off library screen versus a whole integrated um, therapeutic antibody development program featuring the, the optimal library, uh, you can see that it will create much more value for us by positioning it and organizing it in this way. Um, in addition to that, it will certainly help us, I believe, to get better penetration into the critical USA market, which is dominant in this field. Um, so again, it's something which I think will, will help us in moving things forward. Coming on then to the detail of the financial uh, investment uh, performance, I'll hand back to James. So obviously this uh, presentation uh, is coming on the back of the release of our interim results for the six months to uh, 30th of September. And uh, we thought it was useful to put in this uh, chart, which uh, this is only the H1 revenues. We would usually have a graph including H1 and H2s in uh, the annual report. But we've pulled out the H1 revenues just to show you the direction of travel. Uh, and you can see there, there are a few overs and unders, but the trend line is um, um, steadily positive. And um, as already mentioned, uh, uh, a softening this this year, last year's did include our, our, our first milestone of 150,000. And um, we've weathered COVID and we've weathered Brexit, uh, and uh, we are now responding to uh, developing and uh, market and an emerging market, as Adrian says, with an evolving um, sales strategy and to develop uh, uh, more leads. And indeed, we've been uh, doing a lot more face-to-face -face meetings uh, over the recent period. And certainly there have been, um, I don't think barely a week has gone by since Adrian's been here that we haven't been at, at a conference, I think nine, 10 over the last, Ten. Three or four months? Yep. Ten up to the end of this week. Yeah. Uh, and um, the, uh, I said, the integrated service, hopefully, to do that. Do you want to yeah. on? So, uh, a very uh, summary extract of the um, income statement uh, revenues of almost 1.9. Uh, gross profit margin 
um, certainly one to pick out and look at. Uh, we are a growth company. We um, depend on building and adding capacity uh, and then filling that capacity. And as we said, with the slightly softer revenues this uh, half, then we have underutilized that capacity. So uh, the, the growth profit suffers as a direct result from that. Uh, and uh, I think that's a, a, a temporary dip. Um, the other concern that people immediately have when they see margins in an inflationary uh, margin erosion in a, in a inflationary area would be are we unable to pass uh, price rises on uh, and that's not the case we are absolutely able to pass our price rises on there is some lag time because of prices which we have already quoted and there's a time between quoting um uh, getting a purchase order, delivery and invoicing. Uh, we have a very strong relationship with our clients and, and um, we, we trade on the quality of our services and our reliability and our dependability. So we have uh, been giving uh, advance warning uh, and giving fair notice of, of where we are with that. So there is a bit of a time lag on the price rises uh, as well, but those are coming through and um, generally without uh, any... Uh, objection uh, but uh, I say most of, of what we're seeing there is under utilization of resources in the okay on to the balance sheet and um, we've spoken about this already a strong uh, net current asset and current asset ratio three times uh, almost three times uh, current assets to current liabilities and indeed cash uh, in exceeding current payables Non-current payables is not real borrowings. It's notional borrowings from the accounting standard on the capitalization of leases. So uh, not, not a true liability in the sense of the world, certainly in, in my classical accounting uh, standard. We're still having to retain uh, a sizable quantity of inventories. That's consumable stock. Uh, again, that's part of the reliability and dependability that we have with our customers as supply chains uh, continue to be disrupted. We've had Brexit, we've had COVID. We now have an element of um, strike and industrial action coming in there as well. Uh, so there's a lot of, of outside conditions and we're holding more stock uh, of consumables, I suppose, than we would if we were able to operate just in time. But uh, it gives us the ability to continue and schedule our, our client projects uh, as efficiently as possible and to the client expectation by carrying a little bit more than um, we, we necessarily would in, in perfect times. Um, and uh, cash, as said, uh, cash movement in the period uh, of 851,000. Again, the, the two lines, investing and financing, are more to do with accounting for leases uh, than anything else. So uh, the real case in point here is the cash used in operations. And 452,000, I think of that, was uh, R&D spend. So you can see that there's still a, a, a slight utilization of cash in this period. Uh, from the trading commercial activities. That's a slight change. In recent periods, we've had a, a positive EBITDA if we add back the R&D, and we would expect to be back to that. So we've got a sustainable trading uh, commercial activity, which is contributing to our R&D activities, along with uh, our continued and planned expenditure of uh, the funds which we raised in almost three years ago now, April 2020, uh, to continue and to invest in uh, the Optima programme primarily. Uh, and I think I'll hand back to you at that point, Andrew. Okay, thank you very much, James. Um, so if I can, can recap, uh, we're continuing um, the R&D programme with a 7% increase in, in R&D expenditure. We're wanting to push that ahead as quickly as, as we can now. Uh, the time uh, limits that we have on that are largely due to supplier issues. Um, and I should remind people that what we're trying to do with the Optimal program is, is really pushing the boundaries of what's been done before. Um, and indeed, if, if when uh, Optimal comes to the market, um, 
I expect it to be uh, a bit of a game changer and the first time that such a, an offering has uh, been available to our client base. Each stage of the optimal process, however, has been validated and the integration is now being optimized and part of that optimization uh, process is, is scaling up what we're doing. So we know that the component parts and indeed the process work. Um, it's just showing that it can work at the, the right amount of scale and the numbers uh, are sufficient to um, meet market expectations and indeed optimize the output in terms of the number of hit antibodies and their um, affinities coming out of that process. Um, so we're, we're quietly optimistic about that, um, possibly too quietly uh, for some people's liking, but that's because um, we do need to make sure that we've got everything correct uh, and ready to go to, to market. When that does happen, uh, I assure you, you'll, you will hear about it. Um, what we have also seen uh, as we've moved through this optimal program is that the technology is being developed to have a wider application and additional markets that can um, attract more business for us. And possibly one of the easiest ways of uh, positioning that is one of the benefits of Optimal is that we are um, starting with the end in mind, very much in line with fusion philosophy. Um, but uh, that means expressing an intact human uh, IgG in HO cell on the surface so that uh, when we can interrogate a target, uh, it's the end product really, that's, or as close to the end product as uh, we can get for the library screening phase, process, processed and presented by a cell line which is uh, a similar cell line to what will be used in manufacture. So you're eliminating an awful lot of those risks. However, not everybody will necessarily want a intact IgG protein. Uh, some people will actually want uh, smaller fragments of those. Um, and that's something that we could offer with the benefits of the library. So the design of the DNA that is behind the expression, but do it in a more traditional phage display process. Uh, we don't currently offer that, but we could, and it's something that uh, I'd like to see happen. I think it maximizes the uh, value that we can create from the library element itself. Uh, it covers, uh, enables us to attract additional marketplaces, and it's also somewhat defensive to stop people with phage display technologies encroaching into a space that's uh, that really should be ours and optimals. So there's additional uh, options that we can come out of that. Similarly, the other part of the optimal program is the mammalian display, and there's new and emerging markets for which that could also be uh, a significant attraction, um, which is additional to the core markets that the optimal library would be looking to go after. So we can use these benefits and we can cast the net wider and we can attract more clients uh, addressing therapeutic antibody discovery in a number of different ways. Um, so we're, we're looking forward to doing some of that. Um, some of that though uh, will require additional funding. It's not something we can necessarily do now. So you should look out for uh, news on those sorts of issues as well. We do of course uh, make sure that we, we can uh, protect our investments and we are anticipating further patentable uh, inventions coming from our R&D work and that work with, with clients as well. Um, so we will uh, look to expand our IP portfolio in an appropriate way in addition. Uh, in the meantime, we're also building up a body of data with a view to establishing uh, various commercial relations for further validation uh, as well. So again, data driven and moving, um, moving the business forward. If I can round out then in, in terms of the summary, uh, the key points uh, from where we are and where we're heading, particularly um, what, we're, what we're doing to improve the business is the implementation of the integrated therapeutic antibody service. It's a natural evolution of our offering uh, packaging it to make a, a more significant uh, critical mass that can, we can help to penetrate additional markets or penetrate those existing markets much uh, uh, 
uh, more significantly. We become a, a more of a research partner with our customer. We offer them a reduced risk to the project through that continuity of provision, building on our expertise um, and the quality of the work that we do uh, currently do for our clients. There's enhanced ownership and drive uh, that uh, enables a much better relationship. And like I say, we've done this with uh, the case study, if you like, for the, the $1.8 million to year program. Um, but it also, which has shown that we build up a, a knowledge of the target and indeed the customer's target product profile, their endpoint. So beginning with the end in mind, as we've said all along. Um, and like I say, it builds on a very strong case study for this uh, performance, doing more of what we're, we're known to be good at. Um, continuing the momentum on strong commercial performance and execution, the team are doing a good job there. Um, we are going to need to add to that and do better as we move forward. Um, there has been some significant uh, changes in our personnel within the commercial team. There have been some things due to COVID, et cetera, that have held us back. Those issues have now been removed and the timing is right to roll out the integrated therapeutic antibody development service. Um, we're continuing to seek new commercial partnerships, distributors, etc., uh, and commercial alliances in order to expand our reach and our client base um, in some of the ways that I've described to generate additional revenues. We're seeing leads coming in now from some of those partners that we're working with, and we're also looking to extend beyond the cell line development uh, towards um, making sure that handover to the CMO uh, the contract manufacturing organization for our client uh, is is more successful um, and we can uh, retain or earn additional uh, consultancy fees uh, in doing so. We're not moving into the GMO, um, sorry, the GMP manufacture ourselves, um, but it is something that we can become more involved with having developed the cell lines and having a lot of expertise and know-how knowledge as to how those cells perform best. Uh, we will continue to progress the R&D pipeline of service offerings and prepare for the successful launch of the optimal program and its various component parts of which the library is, is the key, uh, probably the most important one but not the only one uh, as a new discovery service and that will be um, supported best by the integrated therapeutic antibody service. So that concludes the presentation for today. Um, and I've noticed there's some good questions coming through. So I'll take a Absolutely, Adrian, James, thank you very much indeed for your presentation this morning. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions just by using the Q&A tab that's situated on the top right hand corner of your screen. Uh, but just while the team take a few moments to review those questions that were submitted already, I would like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A can be accessed via your investor dashboard. Uh, Adrian, James, we did receive a number of pre-submitted questions uh, ahead of today's event. And as you can see in the Q&A tab, we've also received a number of questions uh, throughout your presentation itself as well. So firstly, thank you to everyone on the call for taking the time to submit their questions. And James, Adrian, if I could just hand back to you to respond to those questions where it's appropriate to do so, and then I'll pick up from you at the end. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks to everybody who's submitted those uh, questions either in advance or online today. I'll actually pick up with one that's come through today because it seems logical to do that. So um, question is, hi, Adrian, what's been your first impressions of the company since taking on the role? So in that very nearly four months in, what attracted you to join Fusion? Um, my, my impressions of the business are very positive. Um, what's attracted me to it is um, I, I had an excellent mentor um, who ran what he calls the uh, three circle test. There are three things that we want to do um, with a business. And I think all of these apply to myself personally, but they apply to Fusion. Um, those three, three elements and You've may have probably heard of these before. Uh, are we passionate about it? So yes, I am. I'm very passionate about the development of therapeutic antibodies. It's uh, what I have always wanted to, to do. 
in terms of making an impact on uh, health, uh, health and uh, well-being uh, for people across the world. Um, and that's something that uh, antibodies do remarkably well. They make up a majority, really, of uh, drugs in the pipeline. They make up a very significant proportion of best-selling drugs as well, which suggests the second circle test after, are you passionate about it? Uh, can you make money out of it? Um, which is highly important, particularly for, for investors. And yes, we can. Uh, we have commercial mm -hmm. traction. Uh, can we do better with that? Yes, we can. Uh, and that's something that I'm very keen to do with the business. So I can see that I can add some significant value to the business. And hopefully we'll see that coming through in, in the coming months and years. Uh, the third test is, um, can you be the best in the world? Um, I believe that Fusion already are the best in the world at a number of things that we offer. Um, and we want to expand that portfolio to be best uh, across the, the area. Another way of asking that question is what's your USP? And in our case, it's quality. We differentiate ourselves on quality. We are not um, competing on cost. We have clients who come back to us uh, who have chosen the cheaper option and then come back to us and ask us to fix the issues or just start again because filled with regret that they went down the other route. The development of therapeutics is one of the most difficult things that mankind has ever uh, attempted. Um, it's often compared to, to the moonshot, but we know where the moon is. We know what the, the numbers are. We can see the moon, we can do the calculations and you can get somebody up to it. But actually developing a therapeutic is uh, far more difficult in my opinion. Um, and uh, being the best at that is, is something that drives us uh, and we want to do that much more. Um, so that if I had any regrets about uh, joining Fusion, the only one would be that I didn't come sooner and join sooner. And maybe we could have had a, a, a smoother transition um, rather than the, the something of a chop and change that unfortunately the business has had to contend with, though they have contended with that in my view very well. So uh, some of the other questions that we've had, maybe I can pass this one on to you, James, to get started. How are the board progressing? Uh, board going to address the issue of the high likelihood that a fund raise will be needed? Well, I think it's worth saying that our projections indicate that we can reach break even without the need for further investment or further uh, cash raise in the, the immediate future. Yeah. I think it's also uh, important to bear in mind whilst we're talking about the potential for a fundraise is that um, there are we are making plans to address all eventualities um, which uh, include having the benefits of the integrated therapeutic antibody discovery platform, uh, particularly increasing our presence in the US, which is our single most important market. It's the one where, where we get more revenues from than any other uh, single market um, and bring on the commercial benefits really from the ongoing optimal program in the various forms that we're wanting to manifest the outputs from that R&D effort. Um, to do that may require additional working capital and uh, if uh, we're going to do that we will be submitting plans to the board to review and decide on the best course of action which may include uh, fundraising to, to tackle that much more rapidly and generate more value uh, in the shortest possible time. Another question here, why haven't you heard more about the Optimal platform and what it offers for prospects of the business? This was pre-submitted, so hopefully I've addressed some of those issues already. When will it be launched and when will it start to generate revenue? What will the impact of those revenues have on future expectations? Um, so, the, as I've said, the optimal program is still in the R&D phase. There is a risk to things, but we, we think those risks are now minimal. It's really a question now of scaling it to get the numbers right to meet market expectations and doing so in a, um, a uh, commercially advantageous way in terms of effort. So uh, making that as slick a process as, uh, as we can uh, within reason. Um, so yes, there are continuing delays due to suppliers and as I've said before, what we've asked them to do is something that's really quite complex and they've uh, struggled to, to deliver that to time, but we have confidence that they will, will get there 
and uh, those uh, will allow us to make some developments in, in the coming months. Um, as I mentioned before, but I'll, I'll reiterate again, there's also scope to create more value from the research work that's already been done, um, rather than just the optimal library per se. And we believe that this will further enhance, uh, be enhanced by the evolving strategy of the integrated platform that we're, we're offering. Um, did you have one that you wanted to suggest next? Yeah, uh, another pre-submitted question I have here was, um, where's the shareholder value um, getting? Let me do that one. Yeah. Um, so the share price and market capital of the business, obviously a multiple of the share price of the number of shares there are, um, is affected really by a relatively low liquid level of liquidity. Um, so that in turn is caused because there is a vast number of our shareholders who hold their their shares and, and don't don't trade them. Um, and they the reason they do that is because they believe that more value is yet to be created. So um, that's a good thing. And we welcome it, though, of course, we're very mindful of the, the share price from day to day. The longer term value, which is what we're focused on, um, is going to be created um, through uh, continuing to do what we're doing. And I believe will be enhanced by this evolved strategy, enabling us to increase, in particular, the average value of each project, improve the, um, the visibility on our pipelines, and also enable um, greater success in the commercial side of securing those contracts. There's uh, another one there that has come in today. Geographically, where are your sales the strongest? And do you see this changing as you grow? So I think I'll, I'll start off, but I think you can add to this, Adrian. Um, the, uh, percentage wise, more of our sales come from North America, particular uh, the US than anywhere else. We also have a very strong base in uh, EU countries beyond the UK. And um, we have a significant contribution then as well from Asia. And um, we've announced, um, I think a couple of years ago, uh, the appointment of several distributors in Japan, uh, South Korea and India in particular. Uh, we would have somewhere around the 10 to 15% annually uh, from within uh, these islands. Um, uh, but obviously the, the US I think would be the biggest potential market for growth? Yes, it is. And that's uh, a well-established fact across uh, across the business. Indeed, that's even rolling out more as uh, different um, countries um, sign up to basically ad adapt or adopt the, the FDA uh, ruling. So the FDA is deciding on what share medicines are approved for um, different markets and uh, more countries are now saying, well, well, if it's good enough to the FDA, it's good enough for us. So that puts even more emphasis onto the, uh, the US as a key market. In addition, there may be, uh, there have been challenges really from particularly China, uh, the bigger political uh, field, which I'm not going to comment on possibly puts that into some some additional doubt, but the focus is again increasing in the US. So we're going to, uh, I expect to see uh, more opportunity in, in the US and more revenues deriving from that. And I think that deserves uh, an increasing effort uh, from the commercial focus to, to drive that through. Again, one of the key ways of doing that is to get the critical mass to get attention in the first place and the end-to-end -end offering of the integrated platform, I think, is key uh, to doing that. Mm -hmm. I'll pick up on one here that's come on today. Uh, do you have sufficient f cash to fund your growth aspirations? Uh, what's the planned R&D spend moving forward and where is your focus here? Um, we're in an enviable position really of having very significant aspirations and an awful lot that we could do, um, yeah, but we need to keep the balance right in terms of how much we invest in that. So um, I would like to do a lot more and move a lot faster. Time is the only thing that we can't recreate. Uh, so I'd like to make sure that we make the most of uh, the time 
that we have and push ahead as rapidly as we can uh, in a coordinated and rational way according to a strategic plan. I think we've got the basis of that plan in place. Yes, I'd like to do more. Um, the phage display is just an example that I've mentioned before in terms of way of extracting or creating more value from the library design that we already have in terms of the DNA, but presenting it as antibody fragments. Um, that's something that we would need investment for um, because we would have to do some uh, generate uh, additional lab space. Uh, we need to keep those separate from the other things because of uh, biological reasons and the technical reasons as to how those need to be handled. Um, but I think it's something that we'd very much like to do. So um, I'd like to see the R&D effort at least maintained and although we would redirect it to additional uh, projects. Um, I think it's fair to say that phage display has been done before, so it should be a less risky process than we've, uh, we've tackled or are tackling at the present time. Uh, we've got one here. Have the planned demonstration beta test projects with Optimal started yet? How many of these are likely before this is ready for full commercialization? The internal run programs have uh, been uh, started. They are running now. Um, we are extracting more value from that. Um, we would like to have been able to run it at the full scale as originally envisaged, but because of those supplier issues that I mentioned previously, uh, that's not been possible to do just yet. Um, however, the early indications are positive and they encourage us to proceed as planned with those um, once those technical issues have come through. Uh, once we, we have that, um, then we can run full scale uh, projects with uh, external parties. We have quite a bit of faith in that. Um, we um, have some um, prospects and some discussions ongoing there to make sure that when we are ready, we can move forward rapidly uh, with those uh, projects with uh, external partners who are going to be in a good position to evaluate the technology and also add kudos to what we have and position us well for commercial exploitation in the fall. It will take time. Uh, these processes, these discovery processes are um, quite ex uh, extensive commitments, um, but uh, one of the advantages of Optimal when it, when it works well is that it can move forward at a rate that is in line with uh, the best in the marketplace. And that's what we're really trying to do here. We're trying to create the best uh, best uh, option for um, discovery of therapeutic antibodies. Um, so hopefully that's answered that question. Um, do you want to ask or answer this one? Um, yeah, well, uh, so the question, I think we've partly answered it already. How can you consider a cash position as good when you lost 1.1 million in six months? You'll need another cash injection, will you not? Uh, I think we read double that. We did not lose 1.1 million in six months. We had a, 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 a total uh, cash utilization in the six month period of, of about 850,000. And uh, uh, as I said already, our projections take us through to, to break even. Um, and uh, we would expect to see normally a positive EBITDA from our uh, commercial aspects uh, contributing towards our R&D spend. Um, and uh, we, we've talked about um, cash injections and, and uh, plans uh, and aspirations with, with the credit resources. Thank you. Um, I'll just add to that, that if we do want to do more than is in our plan, then we may need more, more working capital uh, yeah. in order to achieve that and do, do more. Yeah. Um, are the costs associated with conducting an integrated therapeutic product service higher? Um, no, mm -hmm. essentially not. There may be some additional marketing or a refocus of the marketing, but essentially we've got all of the costs uh, involved there. Um, uh, and it's, uh, it, it, it increases the value for us, um, but the margins that we would have would be the same. 
And in fact, you probably get more efficiency because you're bringing in a higher value deal for each transaction. So, yeah. well, it'll and the added visibility allows us to smooth out the peaks and troughs and uh, yeah, get, uh, get manage those better. Yeah. So, yeah. An improvement all round. Uh, there was a second part to that question. Uh, would Fusion have to outsource some activities to third parties uh, with such contract and are there risks associated with this? Um, we do not have to outsource anything more than we currently outsource. So we've managed those outsourcing relationships um, very well um, and we know those partners uh, extremely well. There may be some additional outsourcing that we would look at as the company evolves. Uh, that is a natural reflection of the changing nature of the biology of, of the targets that our customers are going after. Where there is the highest risk with those, the tendency is, in other words, it's a difficult model by which to validate uh, a therapeutic antibody. The tendency is that the client actually has that themselves, and so there's no risk to us, um, someone with their models are accurate but uh, the client's view on that is uh, significant anyway so um it's not something that's a game changer it's uh, very much steady as we go with the plans that we have and using the partners that we do have we are open to adding additional uh options to that moving forward um one case in point would be that uh, and one of the reasons why the market like us is when it comes to cell line development we are not tied to just one cell line master cell line we have three that we typically use uh they are products that come from uh partners who we would then advise uh clients whether they would want to outsource to them to do the uh, manufacturing development under gmp for clinical trials um, I'd like to add another cell line to that option, um, just in case that that's, that's required or better, uh, and gives us the option to use three or maybe four, if that's what the client wants to do. So um, adding to that and continuing to develop the business in the way that it's already planned uh, is, is a good thing, and I think that's how we're going to go. But there's no significant overall additional costs. Uh, what is the outlook for R&D expenditure going forward? I think we've answered that pretty much steady as we go. Um, sure. yeah. So, yeah. so we do this one. What, why doesn't the company take more risk, make its own antibodies and try to raise substantial funds to take them to the clinic with a partner? Um, isn't that the only way to create real significant value? Uh, so me, my immediate answer to the last part of that is no, there are other ways to create uh, significant value. And indeed, that's what a lot of the venture capital companies do and spread their risk and take a stake in uh, more programs, uh, more uh, discovery companies. I should point out that the investment raised to date is to support the CRO model. Uh, so this would be a departure. And in the question itself, the term... Um, Sub raise substantial funds, I think, underlies part of the, uh, the issue there. So um, our current investors have uh, very kindly invested in us yourselves, in some of yourselves included, um, and uh, we need to remain true to what that money was to be used for. Um, however, in terms of how do we create that significant value, it can be created through retaining a stake in those in, in multiple uh, projects with clients, for example, through the royalties and milestones. And again, uh, the integrated therapeutic antibody discovery platform gives us the critical mass to put us into a better position to uh, get more of those built into more projects and indeed at uh, more favorable percentages and uh, quanta to us. Uh, that's very much central to our plan. Um, and again, like I say, uh, supported and enhanced by that uh, evolving strategy that we're using. It's a much lower risk uh, platform and way to, to build up that inherent diversification rather than if we were to start with a, a drug program, we'd be basically doing all eggs in one basket. Um, so I prefer this, this model that we're evolving into, um, but I'd like to see more value and more projects with uh, royalties and milestones included in them. 
Okay, uh, said that there'd been some changes in personnel in the commercial team. Can you please explain more? So um, we previously announced that we have a new head of uh, a new commercial director. Um, he's been working through, uh, so he predates me. So I think he's now seven months into the job. Um, and in that time, he's reviewed how we sell uh, the tools that we use to sell um, and indeed the the way we're, we're organized and set out. So the structure of the organization has changed somewhat. Um, some people have left, some people have been replaced, uh, new people on the team, um, and some yet to be appointed, but uh, uh, due to start very soon. Um, natural evolution of the, the commercial team, and I hope will be positioning us for a significantly more productive commercial team as we as we move forward certainly the rationale behind it is very sound it's very solid uh, we buy into it everybody has agreed that it's the the way to go um, and if uh, the commercial team are uh, the lifeblood blood of of the organization then we will look to expand on that uh, to create more success as and when required okay just conscious of time i wonder i have to should answer we this one down to the last question yeah yeah we can use this one um as the question um question was you, you mentioned the large contract which i guess is the 1.8 million dollar two-year contract which is a case study for the new strategy how's that project going what feedback have you had projects going very well um it's one of the cases which i referred to earlier where clients appreciate that our um forecasting in terms of timelines and costs are, are accurate. Um, we've also built up a very good relationship because of the interactions that we had uh, have with the, the client and uh, getting getting that back. So one of the key things that I've done as an individual is to have a one-to-one -one discussion with um, with their uh, my my counterpart, the client, uh, the client, their CEO. Um, and uh, without we're not allowed to say who it is because they are in stealth mode so i can't say his name or the company's name which is frustrating but he did say that uh, for every uh, criterion that uh, quality criteria that we um, monitor deals by we score a in every single one um, and he wrapped up the conver conversation by saying you guys are awesome which may indicate which nationality he is <laughs> Um, but it's a brilliant piece of feedback. As I said before, it's been very positive. It shows that we are doing uh, exactly the kind of thing that uh, our customers uh, want. And um, what we're looking at doing now is more of what we're good at. Um, he did also say that he recommends us to everybody that we, he speaks to, um, which is even more frustrating that he's in stealth mode, but um, nevertheless, very good to move it forward. So uh, finishing on a on a positive note in terms of the questions, um, really uh, very pleased with how things are progressing. I think what we're offering uh, to the marketplace now as we evolve the strategy uh, will reap benefits for clients and for Fusion and indeed for our investors. So on that point, thank you very much for your time. I hope we've answered everything. Uh, apologies if we missed one. Adrian, James, absolutely. And thank you very much indeed for addressing all of those questions that came in from investors this morning. And of course, if there are any further questions um, that do come through, we'll make these available to you to review immediately after the presentation has ended to, uh, to then add any additional response, of course, where it's appropriate to do so. Um, Adrian, I was just going to ask you for a few closing comments, but I think you just well delivered those. <laughs> um, so if it's OK, so what I'll do now is I'll redirect those on the call uh, for feedback, which I know is particularly important to yourself and the company. Uh, so could I please ask investors not to close this session as you'll now be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This won't take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Fusion Antibodies PLC, we would like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That now concludes today's session, so good morning to you all. Thank you.